believe you you were using this pretty early on, right? I guess that must have given you quite a good sense of, were you using this before you used, used hardwired modular stuff? Because I think it is pretty much a modular synthesizer in, inside. Yeah, yeah what's, what's, I, I've got this, again, I've got this new, okay. um, when it came out, and you're right, it's basically a modular synthesizer, except everything's digitally wired as opposed to physical wires. And it probably has more um, modulation possibilities than than a lot of these big modular synthesizers. You know, you can, you know, the entire envelopes, the, the five envelopes you can modulate, mm -hmm. you know, attack, decay, release, sustain, or whatever. So this was a really cool synthesizer to use. And we used this a lot on the early erasure stuff. And did you get deep into this thing right away, or did you start off kind of being overwhelmed and just scrolling through the, the presets kind of thing? No, because by that time I kind of understood how modular synthesizers worked. Okay, so, so, this, so you had this, you had already had experience with with um, like with the actual modular or heart, un you know physical modular synthesis. Yeah, the physical yeah, because oh, I had you know I've been working with the ARP twenty six hundred and also with the System one hundred M. Okay. Moment. Right. So, but I think that that's you know I think that's a really interesting synthesizer. And you still use this one a lot? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've never used this synth at all. Cool. Now, I've never seen this one before. Is that new for you? This so the big sem. Yes, Ian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, this is this has been around for a while. Um, the guy that designed my studio in the UK, he had these racked up in the way that they are. So this yeah. is house source for them, you know. Um, yeah, I mean it's just a very very big SEM. <laughs> Right. Lots of oscillators. So you've, I, I, I don't remember seeing it in any photos of your suit. You've had that one for a while? Yeah. Is that custom there with all these CVs or was that like an Oberheim thing? Uh, this is custom. Okay. This is customized, yeah. And obviously what the programmer came, that was a, an original part of the SEM. Okay. Um, so you could actually, you know. So what is that? That's CV gate? A filter. CV gate filter for everyone? Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. So you don't use this one polyphonically? No, no, I don't. I don't. I guess you could use it with that. You've got that. You've got many of those MPU one hundred and one. Yeah, right? I mean, I, I could do, I suppose, but no, I don't tend to use. You know, one of the um, things I really enjoy doing is instead of just not that I don't do it, but instead of just putting like a chord down or a pad down, and that's kind of being the basis of the track, I try and use monophonic lines as much as possible. Yeah. And then, you know, so if I am forming a chord, it will be through with different synthesizers playing different parts of the mm -hmm. chord. Right. Yeah. I nearly did that then. <laughs> this is a rare one, I guess, right? The Syrinx? Syrinx, yes, a Dutch synthesizer. Yeah. Um, it's got a great sounding filter though. And um, that's one of these things here that you can go, wow, 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 which is great, you know, wow, wow, for that kind of sound. And you're looking for that in a, in a lead riff. Did you do one of your videos on that one? No. No? No. Maybe that's You're very right. misinformed, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so you bought this one new? Uh, the System 100 I bought new, yeah. Yeah. We but actually, you know Jack Dangerous? That guy from Meat Beat Manifesto? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he actually had, um, I think he had four of them. Did he have four, Jack Dangerous? That, that sounds about right. Yeah, he, but he had actually the one, he had bought them from the Human League. So he had the ones that Human League used. I know they did, they did use that 100 on their early records, but I guess they were using it, I don't know, at some point, a 100M. So he had their old system at his place. I think that they, I, I think I think that I've heard that they actually used that for Dare. A lot of the sounds that oh, the, okay. the, the producer was using it for Dare. Yeah. For oh, those okay. sounds. Who knows? And you like this one a lot? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's a very basic modular synthesizer. I think, you know, it's, um, you know, you you plug from that to that to that and that to that, and then you get a sound. Magic. Yeah. That was actually the first modular synth I had, and I actually sold it. And I love roll and stuff, but I don't know this one. I could sort of see why you you like it because what I noticed about it is it's it's very thin sounding. I think it's not really yeah. It's not really like something you could use for like deep. Well, deep. that well you could if you, you have enough oscill if you have enough oscillators. Oh, okay. You know, I think, but you know, you're right. It's a very clean. Roland it's good for Roland a little, little blippy, blippy sounds and things like that rather than like a, a yeah. bass or... But I think, you know, if you if to learn the basis or of using an, of modular synthesizers, I think it's, it's perfect, you know. Right. Because, 
you know, there are no rules. I mean, there's no output or input that says you can't put that wire into that wire, into that hole, you know, it's, um, yeah. you just try and see what happens. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite modular system at all or, or you're pretty much, it's, a, it's about different things for different purposes? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, it, ch it changes really, you know. I mean, this I'm very, very familiar with. The uh, 700, the Roland 700 is pretty much, it's pretty much the same as this. It's, it's a different sound, but it's the same principle. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm partial to that. Yeah. The ARP 2600, obviously, because it's yeah. uh, such a unique sound. Yeah. So is this this here is a vintage surge or a, a newer newer one? That's an old surge. The yeah. old surge, yeah. And that's yeah. is that one you picked up a long time ago? Not so long ago. That was um, that was in my that was that was bought in my collector's frenzy. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got it. A reasonable price. I mean, now they're crazy prices, aren't they? These things. Mm -hmm. But again, it's got a very unique sound. I think you know, it's not not. I, I can't think of anything in the studio that sounds like the Surge. The yeah. But I still have one of these just in case. <laughs> this is a dope sheet. <laughs> so you put, see, this is where you put the pins. It's like battleships, really. <laughs> you put the pins in, and then you say it makes it sound. I completely don't understand how this works. You don't, or you? No. Yeah, I, it's no. It's kind of baffling to me too. It's very baffling. And it's very unmusical, but it's quite. But you've got the twenty six hundred or twenty five hundred as well. Is that easier to understand? Uh, I, I think so because the, in with, with the twenty five hundred, when it says input, it actually means input. Right. You know, sometimes some of the some of this means the opposite to what you think it might mean. Right. But where it's very very cool. I've, we've used that a lot for the erasure stuff. What's where is the CV gate on this? Thing? In the back. Oh okay. Yeah, we took over two of the um, inputs in the back and wired them to CV gate. It doesn't play in tune very well. Mm. But um, you can calibrate it. I mean, we, um, we probably will calibrate it in the end. But it won't be very stable. Yeah. What do you think of this thing? This zero oscillator. Have you tried it yet? Yeah. I've been messing about with. Again, I mean, it's. Um, I think this, the, the, this, this stuff's very cool. And it's very interesting. Yeah. It's, um, it's got m a lot more. As I said earlier, it's got a lot more possibilities. I think than has the, some of the old modular stuff. Mm -hmm. As far as. Um, Cross modulating and doing weird things with, mm -hmm. but it's still and also obviously what's really cool about it is it's stable. Mm -hmm. so. And so what do you what do you you have to send it like a CV for each? Well, this has got th at the moment this has got a Kenton retrofit on it. Ah. Um, we did start messing about with the idea of making it into a CV and gate um, synthesizer, but it got too complicated. So um, Kenton brought out a retrofit for this really early. So that's what we, we're using for it. Mm -hmm. This is the System 700 from <laughs> Rollins. Yes. Sequencer is just massive for, for what it is, you know? They could have at least made it 16 steps. Is this a unique sounding synth? I think so, yeah. So it's, yeah. A, it's a lot fatter than the 100M. Is it, is it similar sounding to the 100? The System 100? Um, I don't know, I haven't heard a hundred for ages and ages, so I couldn't say, but mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a big, thick sound, and um, it's got nice, uh, the envelope's are really fast on it, it's got a nice crispy filter. Mm -hmm. So the envelopes would be like, similar to like Pro 1 kind of thing, or? I don't know that anything's as fast as a Pro 1, but I'm right. biased. No. Yeah. That's why I'm the company. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at this the other day, so I was trying to work out what this, this is for. Might have been uh -huh. What do you think? Maybe the heat? I don't know. I bet it's for heat. You can't fit beer in there. <laughs> no. You can put a, uh -huh. sand a sandwich, maybe? And <laughs> Pizza, maybe. We toast oh. it? Pizza. Oh, that's quite good, actually. Yeah. Panini. Yeah, yeah, but the heat from the, from the synthesizer could you know, toast the sandwich for you or something. Yeah. Or, or melt the cheese for your pizza. Yeah. Anyway, this is the. Polyfusion. <laughs> this is um, made in upstate New York. Right. And the company still exists actually. And I recently. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I wrote to them and said, can you send me, because I couldn't get schematics for it for the, uh, for, to calibrate the, the oscillators. Uh -huh. So I wrote to them and said, can you send me, you know, I'll pay for them, whatever, I'll copy the schematics. And they said, they said, I've got this email actually, saying, we do not send out schematics for our products. However, if you send us the oscillators, we will calibrate them for you. So I thought that was really cool. This is like 30 years old. So 
but I've still got an yeah. engineer working on their synthesizers. I think that's brilliant. Oh, uh, it even has a little a spring reverb. Is that a spring reverb? Yeah. Huh. And it has this, which is what is it? Where is it? This is unique. So you've got the white noise, pink noise, and infrared. Infrared. Yeah. This is a. I've seen it, but I forget. This is an emulator. Oh, I'm emulator. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's um, pretty basic. It's um, you know got all the, it's got all that I need. Um, it's not very stable. No. no. But uh, you know. It's so how do you how do you like like these synths that are over here? How do you actually like sequence them? Like how how is it you're like the, I see you've got an MPU one one, but like yeah. what you've got like a, a crazy long MIDI cable going through the walls or something or behind the stuff? No, there's a MIDI um, um, uh, distributor. Okay. Uh, and on that side, yeah. So the and the, the MIDI cables, I try to limit limit. I try not to do too many throughs, obviously, to, for timing. Right. Shift. Yeah. But um, so yeah, that one will be triggered from this particular MPU one hundred and one. Mm -hmm. These are brilliant. Yeah. yeah. As and as is the twenty five hundred, that would, that will be triggered from MPU one hundred and one. And this is just one volt per octave synth. This yep. arc, yeah. Yeah. It's um. Obviously, it's 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 pre twenty six hundred. It's the twenty five hundred, mm -hmm. and so um, uh, it's not that stable. Right. Um, it is quite baffling. This synthesizer. Yeah, it, it's it's it's. Uh, I think the. I don't know what to do. I I actually did like I I was commissioned to make this record in the studio in Amsterdam called SEM Center for Electronic Music, yeah. and they had a few things, and they had this, and I. I got some great stuff out of it, but I had no idea what I was doing. No. I just, I was just, you know, fiddling around with these, and I was using the sequencer. So you know, once you start sequencing things, yeah, it doesn't take much for s stuff to start sounding cool. Yeah, it was it was like a a bass beast, like the one there at least. Oh really? It just was the the, the low end out of it was just insane. Oh, I've heard, well, I've heard some. I mean, I, again on YouTube, I've seen people use this stuff. I mean, this particular synthesizer gets some amazing sounds out of it. I mean, the people have really kept theirs pristine and uh -huh. you know, in tune and, and the rest of it. So, but no, it's just a kind of. This is probably the one of the oddest synthesizers in the studio. Yeah. You don't have a Moog here, I guess. No, I, I did have a, a small modular system, but I, I I gave up on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I just realised that I wasn't really. Um, it was unstable. Yeah. And. Um, I don't know that it sounded particularly. Uh, this will be this is real sacrilege, but I don't know that it sounded particularly different from anything else that I had. I don't know. I mean, um, I, I decided anyway that there'd be someone out there that would really, really appreciate something like that, you know, rather than me who is not going to ever use it mm -hmm. for anything uh, musical. Yeah. So, so no, I, I no longer have the. Uh... However, having said that, if anybody out there wants to give me a complete <laughs> modular system. <laughs> modular that's calibrated and stays in tune. <laughs> I'm in Brooklyn. 